In the beginning was the Logos, the Big Bang, the primordial Ohm. Big Bang theory says that the physical universe spiraled out of an unimaginably hot and dense single point called a singularity, billions of times smaller than the head of a pin. It does not say why or how. The more mysterious something is, the more we take for granted that we understand it. It was thought that eventually gravity would either slow the expansion or contract the universe in a big crunch. However, images from the Hubble Space Telescope show that the universe's expansion seems to be actually accelerating, expanding faster and faster as it grows out of the Big Bang. Somehow, there is more mass in the universe than physics predicted. To account for the missing mass, physicists now say that the universe consists of only 4% atomic matter, or what we consider normal matter. 23% of the universe is dark matter, and 73% is dark energy, what we previously thought of as empty space. It is like an invisible nervous system that runs throughout the universe connecting all things. The ancient Vedic teachers taught Nada Brahma, the universe is vibration. The vibratory field is at the root of all true spiritual experience and scientific investigation. It is the same field of energy that saints, Buddhas, yogis, mystics, priests, shamans, and seers have observed by looking within themselves. It has been called Akasha, the primordial Om, Indra's net of jewels, the music of the spheres, and a thousand other names throughout history. It is the common root of all religions. And the link between our inner worlds and our outer worlds. In Mahayana Buddhism in the 3rd century, they described a cosmology not unlike the most advanced physics of modern day. Indra's net of jewels is a metaphor used to describe a much older Vedic teaching, which illustrates the way the fabric of the universe is woven together. Indra, the king of the gods, gave birth to the sun and moves the winds and the waters. Imagine a spider web that extends into all dimensions. The web is made up of dewdrops, and every drop contains the reflection of all the other water drops. And in each reflected dewdrop, you will find the reflections of all the other droplets, the entire web in that reflection, and so on to infinity. Indra's web could be described as a holographic universe where even the smallest stream of light contains the complete pattern of the whole. The Serbian-American scientist Nikolai Tesla is sometimes referred to as the man who invented the 20th century. Tesla was responsible for discovering alternating current electricity and many other creations that are now part of everyday life. Because of his interest in the ancient Vedic traditions, Tesla was in a unique position to understand science through both an Eastern and Western model. Like all great scientists, Tesla looked deeply into the mysteries of the outer world, but he also looked deeply within himself. 
Like the ancient yogis, Tesla used the term akasha to describe the etheric field that extends throughout all things. Tesla studied with Swami Vivekananda, a yogi who brought the ancient teachings of India to the West. In the Vedic teachings, akasha is space itself, the space that the other elements fill, which exists simultaneously with vibration. The two are inseparable. Akasha is yin to prana's yang. A modern concept that can help us to conceptualize akasha, or the primary substance, is the idea of fractals. It wasn't until the 1980s that advances in computers allowed us to actually visualize and reproduce mathematically the patterns in nature. The term fractal was coined in 1980 by mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot, who studied certain simple mathematical equations that when they are repeated, produce an unending array of changing mathematical or geometrical forms within a limited framework. They are limited, but at the same time, infinite. A fractal is a rough geometric shape that can be split into parts, each of which is at least approximately a reduced size copy of the whole pattern, a property called self-similarity. Mandelbrot's fractals have been called the thumbprint of God. You are seeing artwork generated by nature itself. If you turn the Mandelbrot figure a certain way, it looks sort of like a Hindu deity or Buddha. This figure has been termed the Buddha Bro figure. If you look at some forms of ancient art and architecture, you will see that humans have long associated beauty and the sacred with fractal patterns. Infinitely complex, yet every part contains the seed to recreate the whole. Fractals have changed mathematicians' views of the universe and how it operates. With each new level of magnification, there are differences from the original. Constant change and transformation occurs as we traverse from one level of fractal detail to another. This transformation is the cosmic spiral, the embedded intelligence of the matrix of time-space. Fractals are inherently chaotic, full of noise and order. When our minds recognize or define a pattern, we focus on it, as if it is a thing. We try to find the patterns we see as beautiful, but in order to hold the pattern in our minds, we must push away the rest of the fractal. To comprehend a fractal with the senses is to limit its movement. All energy in the universe is neutral, timeless, dimensionless. Our own creativity and capacity for pattern recognition is the link between the microcosm and macrocosm, the timeless world of waves, 
in the solid world of things. Observation is an act of creation through limitations inherent in thinking. We are creating the illusion of solidity, of things by labeling, by naming. The philosopher Kierkegaard said, If you name me, you negate me. By giving me a name, a label, you negate all of the other things I could possibly be. You lock the particle into being a thing by pinning it down, naming it. But at the same time, you are creating it, defining it to exist. Creativity is our highest nature. With the creation of things comes time, which is what creates the illusion of solidity. Einstein was the first scientist to realize that what we think of as empty space is not nothing. It has properties. And intrinsic to the nature of space is nearly unfathomable amounts of energy. The renowned physicist Richard Feynman once said, There is enough energy in a single cubic meter of space to boil all the oceans in the world. Advanced meditators know that in the stillness lies the greatest power. The Buddha had yet another term for the primary substance, what he termed kalapas, which are like tiny particles or wavelets that are arising and passing away trillions of times per second. Reality is, in this sense, like a series of frames in a holographic film camera, moving quickly so as to create the illusion of continuity. When consciousness becomes perfectly still, the illusion is understood, because it is consciousness itself that drives the illusion. In the ancient traditions of the East, it has been understood for thousands of years that all is vibration. Nada Brahma, the universe is sound. The word Nada means sound or vibration, and Brahma is the name for God. Brahma simultaneously is the universe and is the creator. The artist and the art are inseparable. In the Upanishads, one of the oldest human records from ancient India, it is said, Brahma the Creator, sitting on a lotus, opens his eyes, and a world comes into being. Brahma closes his eyes, and a world goes out of being. Ancient mystics, yogis, and seers have maintained that there is a field at the root level of consciousness. The Akashic field, or the Akashic records, where all information, all experience, past, present and future, exists now and always. It is this field or matrix from which all things arise, from subatomic particles, to galaxies, stars, planets and all life. You never see anything in its totality because it is made up of layer upon layer of vibration and it is constantly changing, exchanging information with Akasha. A tree is drinking in the sun, the air, the rain, the earth. 
A world of energy moves in and out of this thing we call a tree. When the thinking mind is still, then you see reality as it is, all aspects together. The tree and the sky and the earth, the rain and the stars are not separate. Life and death, self and other, are not separate. Just as the mountain and the valley are inseparable. In the Native American and other indigenous traditions, it is said that everything has spirit, which is simply another way of saying everything is connected to the one vibratory source. There is one consciousness, one field, one force that moves through all. This field is not happening around you. It is happening through you and happening as you. You are the you in universe. You are the eyes through which creation sees itself. When you wake from a dream, you realize that everything in the dream was you. You were creating it. So-called real life is no different. Everyone, everything is you. The one consciousness looking out of every eye. Under every rock. Within every particle. International researchers at CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, are searching for this field that extends throughout all things. But instead of looking within, they look to the outer physical world. Researchers at the CERN Laboratory in Geneva, Switzerland, announced that they had found the Higgs boson, or the God particle. The Higgs boson experiments prove scientifically that an invisible energy field fills the vacuum of space. CERN's Large Hadron Collider consists of a ring 17 miles in circumference, in which two beams of particles race in opposite directions, converging and smashing together at nearly the speed of light. Scientists observe what comes out of the violent collisions. The standard model cannot account for how particles get their mass. Everything appears to be made of vibration, but there is no thing being vibrated. It is as if there has been an invisible dancer, a shadow, dancing hidden in the ballet of the universe. All the other dancers have always danced around this hidden dancer. We have observed the choreography of the dance. But until now, we could not see that dancer. The so-called God particle, the properties of the base material of universe, the heart of all matter which would account for the unexplained mass and energy that drives the universe's expansion. But far from explaining the nature of the universe, the discovery of the Higgs boson simply presents an even greater mystery, revealing a universe that is more mysterious than we ever imagined. Science is approaching the threshold between consciousness and matter. The eye with which we look at the primordial field and the eye with which the field looks at us are one and the same. The German writer and luminary Wolfgang von Goethe said, The wave is the primordial phenomenon which gave rise to the world. Cymatics is the study of visible sound. The word cymatics comes from the Greek root cyma, which means wave or vibration. One of the first Western scientists to seriously study wave phenomena was Ernst Kladny, 
a German musician and physicist who lived in the 18th century. Kladny discovered that when he spread sand on metal plates and then vibrated the plates with a violin bow, the sand arranged itself into patterns. Different geometrical forms appear depending on the vibration produced. Kladny recorded an entire catalog of these shapes, and they are referred to as Kladny figures. Many of these patterns can be found throughout the natural world, such as the markings of the tortoise, or the spot patterns of a leopard. Studying Kladny patterns or cymatic patterns is one secret way in which high-end guitar, violin and other instrument makers determine the sound qualities of the instruments they make. Hans Jenny expanded on Kladny's work in the 1960s, using various fluids and electronic amplification to generate sound frequencies and coined the term cymatics. If you run simple sine waves through a dish of water, you can see patterns in the water. Depending on the frequency of the wave, different ripple patterns will appear. The higher the frequency, the more complex the pattern. These forms are repeatable, not random. The more you observe, the more you start to see how vibration arranges matter into complex forms from simple repeating waves. This water vibration has a pattern similar to a sunflower. Simply by changing the sound frequency, we get a different pattern. Water is a very mysterious substance. It is highly impressionable. That is, it can receive and hold on to vibration. Because of its high resonance capacity and sensitivity, and an inner readiness to resonate, the water responds instantaneously to all types of sonic waves. Vibrating water and earth make up the majority of mass in plants and animals. It is easy to observe how simple vibrations in water can create recognizable natural patterns. But as we add solids, and increase the amplitude, things get even more interesting. Adding cornstarch to water, we get more complex phenomena. Perhaps the principles of life itself can be observed as vibrations move the cornstarch blob into what appears to be a moving organism. The animating principle of the universe is described in every major religion using words that reflect the understanding of that time in history. In the language of the Incas, the largest empire in pre-Columbian America. The word for human body is Alpa Kamaska, which means literally, animated earth. In Kabbalah, or Jewish mysticism, they talk about the divine name of God, the name that cannot be spoken. It cannot be spoken because it is a vibration that is everywhere. It is all words, all matter. Everything is the sacred word. The tetrahedron is the simplest shape that can exist in three dimensions. Something must have at least four points to have physical reality. The triangle structure is nature's only self-stabilizing pattern. 
In the Old Testament, the word tetragrammaton was often used to represent a certain manifestation of God. It was used when talking about the Word of God, or the special name of God, Logos or Primordial Word. The ancient civilizations knew that at the root structure of the universe was the tetrahedral shape. Out of this shape, nature exhibits a fundamental drive toward equilibrium, Shiva, while it also has a fundamental drive towards change, Shakti. In the Bible, the Gospel of John usually reads, In the beginning was the Word. But in the original text, the term used was Logos. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus, who lived around 500 years before Christ, referred to the Logos as something fundamentally unknowable, the origin of all repetition, pattern and form. The Stoic philosophers who followed the teachings of Heraclitus identified the term with the divine animating principle pervading the universe. In Sufism, the Logos is everywhere and in all things. It is that out of which the unmanifest becomes manifest. In the Hindu tradition, Shiva Nataraja literally means Lord of the Dance. The whole cosmos dances to Shiva's drum. All is imbued or ensouled with the pulsation. Only as long as Shiva is dancing can the world continue to evolve and change. Otherwise it collapses back into nothingness. While Shiva is representative of our witnessing consciousness, Shakti is the substance or stuff of the world. While Shiva lies in meditation, Shakti tries to move him, to bring him into the dance. Like yin and yang, the dancer and the dance exist as one. Logos also means unconcealed truth. He who knows the Logos knows the truth. Many layers of concealment exist in the human world, as Akasha has been swirled into complex structures, concealing the source from itself. Like a divine game of hide-and-seek, we have been hiding for thousands of years, eventually forgetting about the game completely. We somehow forgot that there was anything to find. In Buddhism, one is taught to directly perceive the Logos, the field of change or impermanence within oneself through meditation. When you observe your inner world, you observe subtler and subtler sensations and energies as the mind becomes more concentrated and focused. Through the direct realization of anicca or impermanence at the root level of sensation, one becomes free of attachment to transient external forms. Once we realize there is one vibratory field that is the common root of all religions, how can we say, my religion, or this is my primordial om, my quantum field? The true crisis in our world is not social, political or economic. Our crisis is a crisis of consciousness, an inability to directly experience our true nature. An inability to recognize this nature in everyone and in all things. In the Buddhist tradition, the Bodhisattva is a person with an awakened Buddha nature. A Bodhisattva vows to help to awaken every being in the universe, realizing that there is only one consciousness. To awaken one's true self, one must awaken all beings.
There are innumerable sentient beings in the universe. I vow to help them all to awaken. My imperfections are inexhaustible. I vow to overcome them all. The Dharma is unknowable. I vow to know it. The way of awakening is unattainable. I vow to attain it. <laughs> 